Hi everyone, it's Heidi from Costume Co. back for another live stream. And today I have my very special guest, Tony Teflon, the Don Tony Teflon. Hi, Tony. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. Um, thanks to everybody in the chat, Rep came watching us and everything. I appreciate it. Shout out to Justin Thomas running the show behind the scenes and everything. Again, I appreciate that you have me here and uh, I'm ready to talk about this show. Great. So today we're going to talk about the Gilded Age. And this this is just an accident. So Justin put this backdrop. So today I'm Bertha and then Tony is Aunt Agnes. <laughs> hey, I was just saying. I'm my glad to be Aunt Agnes because I like Aunt, Aunt Agnes. <laughs> I don't really like Bertha. Yeah, no, me neither. Okay. So this is going to be fun because Tony and I, we haven't talked about the show at all. So anything that, you know, we discuss here today, uh, it's new to me. And so it will be new and fresh to you guys. So, well, Tony, uh, before we get going, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Well, if you don't know me, I am Tony Teflon. I have a YouTube channel, Teflon TV. I'm also a children's book author, but that's got nothing really to do with, you know, with this. I've reviewed TV shows and movies, much like I just don't go into depth on costumes or more of a theory guy and, and try to figure out exactly what's going to happen in these shows before it happens. That, that would be probably my niche in this. And that, that's what I do. What's that show you're doing right now? I saw some of the, uh, like, I was like, Oh, what's that show that Tony's covering? It looks really interesting. That is a show called from it's on ethics right now. It's his first season. I also, I got the interview uh, on one of the actresses and let me give a shout out to Heidi because I, when I was trying to ask these, you know, to, to, uh, interview these actors. I didn't know how to go about it. And see, Heidi had a bunch of people. So I asked her for some advice and she gave me some tips and I put them to use and I got one of the actresses on the show. So thank you, Heidi. I appreciate it. That's amazing. Oh, I Well, I was, it was funny. I did an interview today, like before, this is one of the reasons why I was a little bit late getting going. And I was doing an interview. It's part of a series that we're going to be doing on costume designers. And I was interviewing a costume designer. And I said that a lot of people always say, uh, how do you get these interviews? And I say, usually it's just, I ask, and they're oftentimes very responsive. So was she responsive? So oh, I, 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 I just like gang busted her on Twitter. And then she sent me her manager's information. And then the manager, get manager had to approve it with the channel. And I guess I had to check out my channel and stuff. So ethics approved it and she, she came right on. So how did it board. how did it go? Oh, great! She's a great she's a great person, and I'm really excited to have her there. And she's one of the main stars of the show, so it was really good to have her. And um, and yeah, definitely subscribe. You know, follow her on Twitter. Twitter. She's a really nice girl. I mean, she just feels like I mean, I, you look at these actors and act. You know that you look at them and you realize that there's regular people. Like when you start speaking to them, it's just, it's just a job. You know, whether it's, you know, doesn't matter. It's just a job. And she's just a regular chick just trying to do make her way in this industry. And I, and then I think she's going to, because I really think she's got the chops to do it. Well, I'll check out that show um, from, it looks really good. It and is I, and good usually show. any show that you like, I always, I always enjoy. So that's cool. I just want to say hi to everybody before we get going here. Um, of course, we have Justin Thomas is helping in the background there. Uh, Cindy is here. Cindy C, Reflective Rambling. Thanks so much for, she did a, a shout out for us with Robert's stream earlier. So that was really, really sweet of her. Uh, Alicia's here. Alicia, I messaged you earlier. I don't know if you saw that. And we've got, uh, how do I say this? Chriso Bubble? Chriso Bubble? You'll have to tell me how to say that. And Living My Rhapsody, hello, my girl, how are you? Um, Santavia's here, Santavia Major, Mara Jade Starwalker. Uh, so we've got a really nice crowd here tonight. All right, so Tony, Santivia. Yeah. I always get the names wrong. I know. Santivia. <laughs> I had to ask it personally. Santivia, that's very, oh, sexy, sexy name. Um, anyway, so thanks everyone who's coming in right now. We're talking about the Gilded Age. So, Tony, you watched all of the season, right? Yes, Correct? yes. From start okay. to finish every week. Okay, so what did you think of the show? You know, so it's not the type of show typically that I would 
watch, you know, some downtown Abbey type situation. But I'm always fascinated about a couple of things. Number one, costumes. And I really love the costumes and the costume design from back then in that era. Also, it's New York. You know, I'm a New Yorker. I'm a native New Yorker. So, you know, I lived out in, by Saratoga. So when they mentioned Saratoga in these places, I know exactly what they're talking about. So that that always interests me too. And I'm going to, I'm not going to tell you, Heidi, that I, I'm really attracted to an uppity woman. Like, I love that snobby. It makes it sexy to me, that snobbiness. So I, I love to see it. I, just, I truly do. You mean Bertha? Any uppity woman. Oh, any I, uppity I, woman. I, I yes. Just like, I just like that. I like bougie chicks, like, who are very bougie. And there's no more bougie than this. Right? Yeah, there's actually... Bougie. There's a character that's a lot in Outlander like that, and she ends up sleeping with like the main um, uh, protagonist in the show. And uh, yeah, I remember because it was sort of like she's super uppity, kind of mm -hmm. like farm boy, fetch me that pitcher. You know, it was sort oh, of like that, that, kind of like a yeah, come hither yeah. type thing. Uh, one person, though, did email, hey, 30 days. One person messaged me that they didn't think any of the men in the show were sexy or hot. What do you think about that? I have no opinion on the men because I don't know. <laughs> I really don't care <laughs> if people find them attractive or not. It really doesn't. It does. It does nothing for me. So I'm just here to talk about the women. But I will say that, as you said in your video, they were very plain. Uh, they dressed them down, I guess, purposely, as you said. Yeah. Uh, and 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 it showed, you know. But it, it was obvious from the beginning with the first dude when she when he met her in the in the. Uh, we'll get into that. But when he met her inside of the uh in the train station you know for the first time the lawyer and uh you know it was obvious how that was going to end i've seen that storyline from the from the beginning you know i didn't think yeah. it was going to be a oh this is all oh, this is going to work because I, I think that it was set up that you had to have on agnes write about something right you had to have a like like she's a woman of this world she's lived a lot longer than her so to have her all of a sudden be wrong would take away that from the characters uh gravitas so to speak so i knew uh, agnes had to be right about him and just for the fact that she was a worldly woman who's lived much longer than this chick and this girl was just more caught up in the romance and not looking at the the big thing that matters in, the, in this time period and stuff like that and and that's money and stuff and, and that that's all that that makes this world go around now but back then especially especially for women i felt bad for the women in this show actually yeah well actually it, um it uh it I, like i don't know how historically accurate it is i've been reading a little bit you know behind the scenes and like that it might be you know based on the vanderbelts and and some of these industrialists so uh, I'm not exactly sure exactly how accurate it is. Maybe in the chat people know, but uh, for sure it does paint sort of a picture of what life as a woman would be. And then of course life as a black woman would be, uh, it was, which is way worse <laughs> or, you know, people who are working in service, that type of thing. So um, what did you think about how they dealt with the different classes and the different, uh, you know, um, you know, the new money and the old money, that type of thing? what did you think about all that? Well, you know, being where I'm at right now in upstate New York, you know, I, I you see that the old money, new money situation play out up here all the time. You know, there's family names like, you know, there, I would say like up here, there's a name Logan's, right? And then Logan's are the rich family and everyone wants to like all the girls in high school, like they're, they, their desire is to marry Logan. Like that's what they're set out to do. Really? And nowadays. Yeah. That's like, the, I'm going to marry Logan. I'm going to marry Bill Logan. I'm going to marry, like, this is what they're trying to do because they know that that's the family name who has all the money up here. So it's a bigger situation down there, but it still goes on to this day. But I felt tr truly bad for the women because they really didn't have anything. They don't have anything. They don't have jobs. They have no means to make money unless they marry a man with money. And that's the only thing they have or they're born into money, you know, and without being born into money, you're, you're really like almost worthless to a certain class of people. Like if your parents don't have money and you have that money that like you're, you're, there's nothing going on there at all. You know, you're just, you're stuck in, in a certain social st level. But um, I think that they showed it very well. I thought that some of the plot points were rushed though. Like I didn't like the fact that they had this, um, the, one of the, uh, what, what is it, the, the, 
the servants, not servants, but the one that was trying to have an affair with the, with the. With oh, the, I hated the, that. I hated you know, like, that. Was really too quick. Now, yeah. I, 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 you know, I don't know if he didn't do it. This, I, I still think the jury's out on it. Did he really have sex with this woman? Because then another scene, he, the first one, he throws her out, but then he like calls her back in another one. So I don't know if he did or didn't, but I think that they they rushed that. Like, oh, all of a sudden, you're going to have this chick that's going in and do it. And then they got rid of her. It, just wasn't, it wasn't right. They, you could have saved that for the second season. Because I don't know where they're going to go in the second season. Because they, they did a lot this season. And, you know, it. how will it get old? Uh, Bertha trying to get into the society and them trying to hold it back and eventually she's going to get there, you know. And so I don't know how, how you can play that out, but how many seasons you can keep playing that game because that just seems the only game that they're playing here. Yeah, I just say uh, Leela Blue Pins asks, I wanted to ask where the sleeveless tank top bodices with the long sleeve under correct to the period the main character wore them often. She's talking about Marion and um, I couldn't find anything about it. And actually I watched this other really great video on it. And she said that they would have had maybe something like that, like 20 years earlier prior uh, that she saw. But no, definitely it's not period correct. Um, I, a lot of Marion's costumes weren't, I would say not period correct. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's an interesting point. Cause they have uh, called for a season two. There was a few things, a few plot points that I found that didn't really go anywhere. Like one was, I think it was the, uh, the footman or something. He kept going to this woman's house to see her. And then he saw her at the ball, but they just, nothing ever came of that. Do you know what I'm talking about? He's bald. Yeah, I know exactly with that. Cause I, that, I think he, that's his ex. That's the way I, I took it. That's his and she ex. Married, and she married and well married or up. something. She, mm -hmm. she married up and. He was embarrassed to see her in the position he she was in, but he still wanted to see her because mm -hmm. he's still in love with her, you know. So I think that that's what that is. I don't think that really goes anywhere. I mean, I don't think this woman is gonna risk her what she has. She, you can't, you know, you, you just can't. You, you just can't do that uh, at this time. You you lose everything, and for what, you know. So I don't think that's gonna go anywhere at that plot point. At all. So I didn't, yeah, that's I didn't, that's an old really chestnut. Care. Yeah, <laughs> that I like like I was I was saying like some of the plots plot points in the show I found like you know I've seen them before like I you know I watched all of Downton Abbey I watched all of Upstairs Downstairs so a lot of these stories I had already I've already seen them you know like uh, sorry guys there's some spoilers here like you know the guy killing himself over the uh, losing money in the stock market I mean they did that in and. Uh, it's a very, very famous scene in Upstairs, Downstairs. So, you know, um, so I kind of like some of the plot points, I was like, oh, this is so like, you know, done. I wanted to see something new. But the one the one plot point I loved was the one about that I never saw coming. I don't know about you, Tony, was the one about the French chef who turned out to not be French. That How fun was that? I love that storyline. <laughs> that was a good one. I, I didn't think he wasn't going to be a French chef. It made me think, if you if you ever uh, seen a, a movie called Beauty Parlor? No, I've never seen oh, it. Oh, well, and in that movie, there's a guy Kevin Bacon plays. He's Jorge. And and he's got this big accent. Oh, my name is Jorge. I'm just uh, And in the end, they find out that he's just really some guy from, like, Kentucky. Yeah, and oh, that's hilarious. Out, he's like, you know, man, he's got a Kentucky accent. Like, you want to leave me alone? Like that. But the whole yeah. time he was fronting like he was Jorge and everything else. And it made me think of that situation, you know. Oh, so hi, uh, hi, that. Mark. Mark Mark is here, my good friend Mark. Mark Henderson, a model of survival. That's a great name, Mark. <laughs> um, and actually, I just want to say, okay, she told me how to say her name. Tony, sorry to interrupt you there. Uh, let me go back here to see if I can find her. She, her name is French. Oh, how do I say your name? Wait, she says it here. Hello, Costume Co. Uh, I have to kind of sit back. Oh, here. Uh, oh, she says her name is pronounced like Creso, and the rest, it, it's French actually, but bubble. So Creso bubble. Creso bubble is the closest pronunciation. Sorry. And I'm really terrible with uh, pronunciations, but she says, I wanted to thank costume co for your channel. Always find you so dedicated in your video. Uh, and they are always very well done. So thank for all you do. Oh, that's really lovely. Thank you so much. Uh, she says, Oh, you're a man. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
there was somebody who I thought was a was a, a woman, like a man for ages, and it turned out it was a woman. That happened to me. I had a person coming up, uh, Kelly Johnson, and I thought Kelly Johnson was, was was a woman, and it turned out it was a man. Then I, I remember, I said, "All right, Kelly has a Johnson." That's how I remember. Yes, that's a good. You used word association. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, Sorry. and I, I, I mean, I'm trying to think of a of a male Kelly, a famous Kelly. There's probably, I think there's a baseball player named Kelly, but yeah, sorry about that. Um, but that, thank you for the lovely comment. So yeah, so a couple, of, like, so there were a couple of storylines that I really, really got into. I, okay, let's talk about characters. You want to do that? Let's go through the characters and and so let, do you want to start with Bertha? Yeah, Bertha, we could do it. So the the more, probably the most uppity chicken and stuff like that. You know what I mean? But I. I liked it. I thought it was hilarious though when, like, in the like first second episode when she just ran on and on the bed and just collapsed, oh, like to, to be like, oh, my life is over. I just gotta, <laughs> listen, I mean, the opulence that these people live in is just ridiculous. I mean, she literally lives in a hotel by herself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the best way to describe this place. It's a it's a hotel with fully staffed hotel. By herself, she lived. And why someone want to live like that? I don't know. May I have it? I would like to give it a shot. Maybe I'd like it, you know. But I, I just, I didn't think that I, that she hit. I think the actress hit the notes properly, but I don't think that that the storyline was should have went the way it went. I don't think she should have. They, they set it up that she won. That's, that's that's the way they wanted you to think that she won, but was it truly a win? I don't know because you won by getting by not allowing these women's children to participate in the ball, and the only reason they came around was because they wanted their kids to be in the ball. So yes, they did show up, but they didn't show up because they wanted to be around you. They showed up for their kids in general. So I don't I didn't like the way they they made that like she won because to me it really wasn't a win for her. It wasn't like she was accepted into society. It was just for that reason. I thought the costumes were great. Yeah, and, I and thought that her hair was great when it finally came down here. And it was weird to me, like you know, you're sleeping in different rooms from your husband, like so far away from your husband that a woman can go in bed with him, and he had to ask permission. May I spend the night with you too? Uh, I doubt they 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 did. I doubt they did. I think that was just they did. I think they did that for the show. I doubt that they would have asked for permission. Yeah, because that's crazy to me that he would. May I have permission? Listen, I, this is my house. This is, I pay for everything. I'm asking you permission to spend the night with you. You're my wife. Uh, I think they definitely did add some modern things, like for instance, like Peggy being the the secretary. Mm -hmm. uh, I read an article that that never would have happened. That she no. never would have been a secretary. So they definitely added some modern touches to the story um uh yeah well i think and also i think like bertha and her husband they kind of they kind of show themselves as almost being like a partnership you know mm -hmm. like even though he's the money maker i think they sort of see themselves as being like a partnership as opposed to him her being like a trophy wife or something like that but when he was about to go down you know, for the train thing, she did not care. Only thing she cared about was, oh, this is going to affect my standing. Like, so you're about to lose everything. And all you I, think yeah, about is standing? Yeah, no, the funny thing about that line that made me, uh, kind of made me chuckle a bit is uh, it reminded me of, uh, did you hear the story about Joe Behar? Mm -hmm. When they were talking about the Ukraine and the war in the Ukraine, and Joe Behar, who's on the show, the, the, the uh, sorry, what's it called? The view, the view. Yeah. She said, Oh my God. Like I've been trying to go to Europe for the last two years and now I'm never going to be able to go to Europe now that there's a, a war in Ukraine or something like that. Like, and then everyone was like, what, you know, like showing her insensitivity and everything. And it's one thing to think it in your brain, like, Oh mm -hmm. geez, now I won't be able to go to, uh, to Europe, but then to actually say it on live television, that was sort of what it reminded me of Bertha. She's just like, you know, Bertha, that's your inside voice. You're not supposed to say that out loud to your husband. Who's, yeah, that's, what, you know, that's like uh, Kelly Osborne when she said, they said, she's like, oh, you got to have Mexicans. In, if you don't want Mexicans in, in this country, who's going to clean the toilet? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's one thing to have like, uh, you know, yeah, she was worried about her vacation says 30 days. <laughs> exactly. So that's sort of what Bertha reminds me of. She reminds me of sort of a like 
you know, I guess in this day and age, you would call her a white privileged woman, right? Like, you know, like to the max in this case, she's not just a white privileged woman. She's an, it's like, and, and her, her worries, the things that she worries about, uh, we would call them, um, uh, executive problems, or there's another name for that, you know, when something is First really world problem. a small thing that's not really that even important, but for her, she's decided that it's just yeah. a massive, you know, issue. Um, but she's like, she's so caught up in her bubble. Like, she's like, she doesn't see what's really going on around her. You know what I mean? Like, she's so focused on doing her thing. Like, if your husband, you're worried about your society standing. If your husband loses everything, that's out the window. So that should be your number one. If you're really worried about your society standing, you should be worried about that and making sure that gets handled to keep your status. You know what I mean? Because you have nothing. He's like, you know, he, he risked it all twice. We've seen him risk yeah. it all. That's why I think it's kind of they, they went too fast with it. They had two crises with him. The one crisis with the stocks. And he overcame that by outbuying them. And that's how the, when the guy shot himself because he out, outbid him and, and bankrupt him. They, I know they wanted to show him that he was smart and ruthless and willing to do whatever it took to maintain. But then they go again with the second crisis with the train. I just think that was too much because now what are you going to do? He's almost lost his horse in twice in the first season. So what are you going to do with him now? Yeah, I, I know. I thought it, the other thing was like, you know, I think they ended it with the episode where the one guy kills himself. And then I thought there was going to be some fallout from that. And then he's like in his in his car. And then the other, you know, upper crust man says, uh, or he, he says, oh, you know, that's OK. Like he was weak, you know, he, you know, uh, and I'm thinking, really? Like and I, I keep thinking like I'm waiting for retribu retribution to happen. Like I felt, I don't know how you felt about this, but did you not feel like they originally, when they announced there was going to be 10 episodes, I felt like there could have been 10 episodes in this season. Like, and I'm wondering if maybe there were supposed to be originally 10 and then in the end, they just decided to do nine. Cause it does feel like the other storyline I felt that was kind of just out of nowhere was the, the cook who in, for all intents and purposes is like, you know, seems like a very, good person a respectable person mm -hmm. she's got a gambling problem which just didn't really mesh well with her character for me yeah. um you know because she's a servant and they don't get a lot of time off so she owes like you know they're coming around they're going to mess her up and everything and then they pay off her debt that that just seemed to be handled so swiftly and it quickly as as anything could be handled they they handled yeah. that as fast i think they just wanted to sweep that right under the rug and it didn't have to be handled that fast if it, it, that's something because now you're talking number one i don't think that's ever going to happen i don't care who these guys think they are they're not going to the richest person one of the richest people in new york city's house grabbing up a servant you're going to jail yeah you know what i mean you, you can't go I, I don't know who to compare it to let's let's just say uh jeff bezo made you're not showing up at jeff bezo's house trying to extort her maid for money for again no matter who you are because you're going to jail as soon as you so that was a little bit unbelievable that they would really go there now if they seen her out and about then i could understand it but the fact they went to the residence like they're really gonna go there that's not happening they would never do a thing like that this, this is something that wouldn't happen but they did sweep that fast under the rug they, i think that they cut a couple of storylines short Mm -hmm. uh, I have to say, uh, DK says, um, I don't know you think of this, Tony. It's easy to judge Bertha as though her concerns are petty, but if she doesn't succeed, her kids won't marry well. Her family won't have influence politically. Mr. and Mrs. Russell's goals go hand in hand. Uh, no, what do you think of that? I comment? No, I don't believe that comment at all. Number yeah. one, her kids are going to marry well no matter what because she they have money. And that she's never going to marry bad. But the whole thing is, so what, what, what's marrying well to you? Marrying who you love? or marrying who your mother wants you to marry because that's the way she's setting it up like right? a mother setting up i'm gonna pick your husband for you so now but she has so much money that she could truly marry for love because they're not gonna want for anything all right so and her mother's not gonna give her that chance to do that or anything you know so yeah and i don't agree that the, i don't agree that george and and uh Bertha are lying because George says, why has, you know, she should have been out. He says it several times. She should have been out by now. Mm -hmm. He says, why don't you find, you know, why don't you hang out with, you know, 
There are New Money Society because they had their own society. They're building the Met, right? Yeah. The Met Opera House. So the new society, she could easily hang out with them, but she goes, I don't want to be friends with them. I want to be friends with the old money. She's made that decision. George would have been fine if she had been friends with the new money. Mm -hmm. And yeah. as you mentioned, like her son was already uh, hanging out, uh, you know, went to Newport with, with the old money. He was with Oscar. He was with uh, Carrie mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, uh, Larry was, I should say. And so, you know, I, I, they're already like, so it's just really what is, she's very rigid in her, in her idea of what success is mm -hmm. uh, to her success is not money. Success is society. Um, as you say, it's not marrying for love. It's marrying for position. So I don't, I don't think the entire family are actually at in the same uh, aligned at all. No, like Larry even or the daughter went to the father. She, you know, the father didn't want to go against the mother. You know what I mean? But she agreed with the daughter. He's like, I agree with you, but I'm not going against your mother. I'm not getting Bertha mad at me. You know, so they, they were not on the same page. They weren't like a political power couple. Like I'm like what she was doing, Bertha wasn't doing stuff for the betterment of him. He was doing things for her dream, but she wasn't doing anything to help him in his dream and get him out of trouble and do things. But anything she needed, he was there for. When he went to the went to the auction, I mean to the uh he went to the one benefit, you know, the first benefit to go and he just started buying everything out. Boom, boom, oh, he boom, totally, boom, boom. he totally is enamored with her. He's, he totally loves her. It's probably because she's uppity and he loves, he probably finds it hot. Yeah. He probably <laughs> married her above her status. I mean, he probably, you know, he, he, it seems like he worked his way to this money. Well, there is, someone was asking about that. I think she was of a lower status as well, from what I, uh, read, if I recall. So I'm not sure what the situation was with them, but I know like Vanderbilt, who he's loosely based on, Jay Gould, those two worked their way up. Um, like kind of like Jeff Bezos, or, or actually I don't know if Jeff Bezos, I thought it's a good example, or uh, Elon Musk, you know? Yeah, this is the way, well, Elon Musk's mother was a world famous model. Oh, okay, well then that's a bad example. Right. <laughs> so he was been rich, Elon Musk. Yeah. He's I'm trying to think of someone who's self-made Richard Branson. I don't know. There's, it's there are some, find, right? It's hard to find a self -made hard to find. Yeah. That, that, that achieves that type of success. It's really hard because back then you could, because there were no labor laws, right? You could have people working 15 straight hours, 17 straight hours, 18 straight hours. Uh, you know, so they abused all their workers and everything and they paid them pennies. You know, so you, you can't get away with that right now. So it's hard to work your way all the way up to that, to where this guy is at right now. Because it mm -hmm. seems like he's one of the wealthiest in New York City. And that's crazy that, to be one of the wealthiest in New York City. I don't think he's the wealthiest person then. I don't think we've seen the wealthiest yeah. people yet. I think like the, like the Rockefellers were probably yeah, the, like the uh, Rockefeller type. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, and it's funny because, you know... Um, What's the name of that journalist? He's a Vanderbilt. Um, like he's Gloria Vanderbilt. Son. Oh, that's, uh, Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper, yeah. And he said one of the sure ways to, like when he was dating, uh, one of the sure ways to get him to walk out on a date is to ask him about being a Vanderbilt. <laughs> <laughs> but why <laughs> would you like, want to though? I mean, that's well, exactly. Not, if you if you date Drew Barrymore, you gotta say, how's it be to Barrymore? <laughs> yeah, no, I know that would be weird. But I don't think people would think of I don't know. Yeah, you're right. I didn't even think about that exactly. She's a Barrymore. So yeah. that's very true. Um, but it's funny too, because I don't think his mom had that much money. Like, I don't think she got that much money from um I remember because well, she made her own money. A lot of she, 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 did, got, yes. she got a lot of money, but she got she started her clothing line. So, you know, it, it's kind of like so she had money. She was in that Gilded Age life, but she expanded and became a, a businesswoman, something that none of these women will ever do. Nothing that Agnes would do, nothing that Bertha would do. But she became she got her own clothing line and she made jeans, really made jeans popular. I mean, she popularized women's jeans in her time with, with her stuff. She did, yes. Um, and uh, I don't. It was funny because, like, uh, was it like it wasn't Brooke Shields who wore her jeans? Was it Brooke Shields wore Sassoon? Sassoon, yes, she I wore Sassoon. Sassoon. I nothing had Sassoon and Jordache. And she wore Calvin's, right? Nothing gets. Oh, Calvin's. Yes, Calvin's. nothing comes between me and my Calvin's. 
You're right. But no, uh, Gloria Vanderbilt were actually, I never wore Gloria Vanderbilt because when I was younger, they would have been like an older woman's jeans. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? They would have yeah. been for like a woman with money, but a little bit older, like a teenager wouldn't have worn Gloria Vanderbilt. It would have yeah, been no, weird. and they didn't sell them everywhere. They only sold them in like yeah. special stores, like Bloomingdale's sold them. And there wasn't Bloomingdale's everywhere back then, you know? So you could, it was, they were really hard to come by. Yes, Tony's dropping the fashion knowledge. <laughs> Um, I want to say hi to Oaktown girl and Tatiana, my girl is here. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Tatiana and uh, Oaktown for coming tonight. This is for having a fun time with Tony Teflon, the Don. Uh, where did you get that name from, by the way? Is it just because it rhymes with the Tony Teflon? <laughs> well, no, the Teflon Don is John Gotti. He was known as the Teflon oh, Don in New York City because he so kept I didn't even know that. All, the, all the cases. So Teflon and Don just go together. So. Oh, I get it. That's so cool. Uh, is that your stage name? That is my stage name. Yeah. Okay. I won't ask you what your real name is. Oh, so uh, Santivia says, am I saying that right now? Santivia? Yeah, that's right. Uh, that Gloria Vanderbilt wore her own jeans. Yeah, she was actually a very attractive woman. She was. She as was. well. Well, she was like famous since she was, you know, a child. Mm -hmm. You know, she was famous when she was just for being born. She was famous. You know, it's like the, Quinton, uh, the Quint Quentin Temp Quintuplets. The Dion yeah. quintuplets. Um, okay, so we've talked about Bertha. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you and I are fairly aligned. Um, what? Okay, you want to talk about the sisters, Ada and Agnes? Yes, we can talk about that. Okay, well, they're like you know, I told you is my favorite. Yes, Agnes is my face. I love the actress. Number one, I love her. I loved her in everything I've ever seen her do. So I love her. You know, I yep. so and she just plays the role. Perfectly, you know, she's just perfect for the role. Everything is, you know, everything with Aunt Agnes is effortless. Like there's no effort for anything, you know. It's just boom, 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 you know. And she's just so snooty, like, like when she caught the 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 butler over there at that house, and she oh, just went, oh. that was another plot point that I love, by the way. That that was, that was hilarious. But they didn't pay it off because he didn't. Did he find? He didn't find out who dropped the dime on him, right? He didn't find that out, right? Yes. So he got a note that said who it was that was written by the maid, you know, the mm -hmm. disgruntled maid who quit. Oh, my God. Thank you so much for reflective rambling. You don't have to do that. That's so sweet. Thank you. She just gave us a $10 super sticker. Thank, oh, you. thank you. Um, Yeah. So it was written on a piece of paper from the maid, but they never told us. So then I'm like, again, that's why I felt like that. It felt like there should have been an episode 10 for some of these like loose ends, you know, that didn't get wrapped up. I thought he was going to go work, work for her. Like, that's where I said, I thought that's where it was going, that he was going to jump ship and go over there and stuff. But, you know, Aunt Agnes wouldn't speak to him. And he was like, so shook. She's like, he can make the lunch for us. Like, oh, you, you're not allowed to make lunch anymore. That's your punishment. I'd be like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, it was funny because it was sort of like a back to like that she wouldn't let go of the uh, her her lady maid. And mm -hmm. it's sort of like with him, like if it had been any other situation, they probably just would have dismissed him. But she's so set in her ways that she just, you know, um, you know, won't even dismiss the butler, won't dismiss the ladies maid because she's just had them so long. Like, what are you mm -hmm. going to do? You're going to go find another one? No. So just, you know, I just thought that was so funny, though, her Which having... She was going to get rid of Mrs. Bauer, though, right, for, for making uh, the black girl feel uncomfortable. Well, she decided in the end not to because uh, we're actually, I think, did she give her the choice? Because she, she, if you, if she, cause she left. She wouldn't do it, I think. That's why, right? She, she wanted her to stay. I think if she would have yeah. stayed, she would have did it. But I think the fact that she left, she, she wouldn't do it then. Thanks, Mark. Mark says that women in North America couldn't have bank accounts on their own until 1969. Oh, I actually, Mark, that reminds me. So my mom used to work for IBM, who, by the way, used to, uh, apparently they worked with the Nazis. Uh, I don't know if you, know, you guys know. IBM. That. Yeah, they did back in the 40s. A lot of people work with the Nazis. Yeah. So anyway, in the 60s, my mom worked for IBM and then she got pregnant and they said, OK, you have to leave. You, you weren't allowed to have a job with IBM if you were pregnant. So she said, so she left and then, but then she did cover like a couple of times she would come in and cover someone if they needed somebody. But um, yeah, so it was just sort of, you know, it was a little bit like, 
uh, Mad Men, like I, a lot of times when I watch Mad Men, I'd be like, yeah, that kind of reminds me a little bit of what, like, you know, not going and walking around the block, like not, you know, a woman wouldn't just go out for a walk at night. That would be considered, you know, unseemly. Um, so, you know, that's why I was kind of surprised at Marion being able to sneak out of the house as much as she was. Cause she's, she starts to become bolder, right? She starts to just like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to go out now. Uh, and just the idea that no, you don't do that. It's so strange, right? Yeah, it was, it was more like um, she was just smitten, and the more smitten she got with this guy, I guess that's the word to use back then, right? That that she just got bolder with it. You know, she was just like, I don't care, I don't care. Like she really believed that they were going to marry for love, and this is not the world you're in. If she would have stayed where she was at, yeah, you could marry for love out there, and you could have a little house, and you could do that. But when you're in New York. That's not the way it goes anymore. And he's seen that clear as soon as he, he won. He's like, ah, ah this is going to be good, but ah, we can't make it here without money. And you ain't got none. You know, and he came to them terms and like, I have to marry a woman with money in order for me to, to be what I want. And, and it's not like he was a, he's a lawyer. But back yeah. then, being a lawyer was nothing. Like, it, it, it had no respect being a lawyer back then. You didn't make that. It's not like he was Johnny Cochran and all these lawyers now. It, it was a different game back then when you were a lawyer. You didn't get that same respect that we get now for being a lawyer. So that's why he had to marry for that money. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so we, oh, we talked about Agnes, but we didn't talk about Ada. Like, what'd you think of mm -hmm. her? You know, the actress from uh, Sex in the City. Yeah, so I, I, didn't, I don't like her in this episode, in, in Sex in the City. I don't like her in, in this new version of Sex in the City. I don't yeah. like her at all in that. I don't like her. But in this, really? I, you know, no, I thought that show was terrible. Oh, you mean Sex in the City. Okay, so yeah, yeah. I, did, I, I, didn't re, I didn't watch any of the new yeah, ones. I just said forget it. I'm not, you I'm not, not going there. No, yeah. don't do it. Don't do it to yourself. But I will say, I think she played this role very well. This playing the, uh, you know, I wouldn't say that the, so she's a subservient sister. Like, it, it's to the point right now where she's in, at a stage in her life where she can't upset Agnes because she has, if Agnes says, get out, what is she doing? What does she have? She has nothing, zero. She can't feed herself. So, I mean, she should never have a, another piece of clothing again for the rest of her life. At, at the point, the way they're making it, it's like she's too old to get married. And she had the same exact situation happen to her niece, happened to her with the guy. And Agnes seen through both situations. So, oh, sorry, Alicia's ask, asking which actress it is. It's um, yeah, thank you, yes, uh, uh, Cynthia, Cynthia Nixon. Nixon. Who yes, did run for governor of New York. Oh no, wait, really? Yeah, she lost. Wow. She ran for governor, and she. Oh, she okay, that's very cool. Couldn't be Cuomo in the in the primary. Uh, she says, Oak, Oak Town Girl said, pulled over to set the record straight. Aunt Agnes refused to fire her head maid because she didn't want to train a new one. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, she's just, and they've probably been together. I mean, she's that character. Well, I was reading something about her maid, you know, when they, I was trying to figure this out too. Like, you know, when she goes to visit her mother and then in a poor part of town, yep. like someone says that that was them showing the poor in in new york city during that time but it it was such a small little i thought that was kind of showing maybe why she's a miserable person that yeah what, what did you get like from when that? she was going to visit her mother and her, yeah, mother, and her mother was, was her mother was like a you know i would i said to my husband i would have just smothered her with a pillow like, <laughs> seriously like or i wouldn't go back <laughs> you know like, back then it was you know everything was segregated by you know who you are you're the irish sections you had the russian sections you had the italian sections you had the jewish sections so i think they were just showing her section of, and what she came from and why she needs her job you know this is this is if she doesn't have this job she's got to go back to that so she's not trying to go back to that for nothing you know and and why and make you kind of sympathize for it say look how bad she's trying to be nice to her mother and this is the way her mother treats her and stuff you know but my mother just seems like a miserable bitter woman and it it's i could see why women would be bitter in that time period because it's just there's really nothing for you to do as a woman back then but get married and if you're not of the right and if you're not of the right birth you're not marrying anyone unless you're lucky like bertha you know and that's a one yeah. in a million shot you know 
for that to happen. And back then, you know, there were really no celebrities, like big celebrities. Like there were no really big movie stars like there are today and sport athletes like there are today. So these high society people were the movie stars of their generation. This is who the press followed around. This is who the paparazzi followed around was them. There was no other people to follow around but them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first thing. Oh, yeah. So um, Alicia wants to know who the character was. She played in Sex in the City and Tatiana says it's Miranda. Yeah, she's Miranda. And then Tatiana said the racist maid, I call her Bitter Betty because I can't remember her actual name. I can't remember. I, the actress is great, though. I think she does a really, you yeah, know, so good I job. I thought her last name was Bauer. It might be Bauer. Okay, so uh, so you so you, so you didn't like Cynthia Nixon in Sex and City, but you thought she's pretty good here. I I, I thought she was like really her. good. I thought yeah, I and, and their costumes are my favorite, as I think I mentioned in uh, the video. But she was she was almost smitten with love, just like her niece, you know. And, and yeah. I, 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 oh, that's that. By the way, that I thought was handled really really well. So um, so there's this this guy from her past that you know her father refused him and the reason why is because he heard you know he, he was out one night drinking or something and he said he was going to be marrying into money or something like that so uh and you know as soon as and again agnes as soon as she tells him he's like out of there but you know it's funny like i think most of us would know that people change but agnes is not having any of it like you know most people would be like a long time is gone and he's obviously never married either right Mm -hmm. No, but Agnes, Agnes sniffed that out. She's, she could sniff that out. So I said, it's the same. That, that's why she favored her niece because of her situation. She wanted it to really work, mm -hmm. you know, because she knew her situation didn't work and she really wanted to see that work. But Agnes knows, Agnes has lived long enough and seen this game and she knows mm -hmm. what it takes to make it. And she knew that, listen, he's just that he thinks you have money and you have nothing. And that's it. And that's the way the niece is, you know. The, I mean, it's her who gets the niece. I don't know if Agnes would have took the niece in if if she didn't say bring her in. I don't know if Agnes would have took her in, you know, because you know because of the brother and she didn't really get along with the brother and everything, you know. I don't know if she would have took her in, but it was you know she was like, you know, I don't want to say good cop, bad cop, but it's kind of a situation like that, you know. She's Agnes's conscious, you know, good conscious to do the right thing. And she's and she's the only one who could talk to her a certain way, but she can't go too far. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so uh all right, so do you want to talk about any of the kids? Like we could talk about Miriam or we could talk about Peggy, like or the young people. Who do you want to talk about next? Yeah, oh, Miriam is the I the one with the, the with the scarf around the head all the time with the hat. Oh god, Gladys. I didn't like that whatsoever. Oh, like I at hated all. it. I I just thought it looked like she had a toothache. You know, like she was just. <laughs> oh my God. There was apparently a, um, uh, someone I, in another video I saw it, there was a, um, a plate from like the 1800s with a girl wearing that outfit. So they were saying that they modeled it after that. No, I hated it too. Yeah. I, totally like, and I, and I that. thought that, that the guy, uh, the gay guy, Agnes's son, who, who's chasing her bisexual, is with Oliver, way too was or, way, uh, sorry uh, Oscar uh, way too old. I I, I would have thought that you know that her mother would have sniffed that out as fast as possible and and got rid of him. I just but this shows you that these you could be an old man and talk to these young girls back then and no one cared. You know what I mean? And try to do that today and people would just call you a pervert. Well, it's funny in Pride and Prejudice, or sorry, in Sense and Sensibility, she like she's approached by Alan Rickman, and she's kind of like, dude, you're like way too old for me. But I think she's supposed to be really like maybe sixteen, maybe eighteen, because this is the other thing uh, people were asking. Well, how old is, um, uh, is uh, what's her name, um, the daughter Gladys? Yeah. How old is yeah. Gladys? Is she like because she looks really young? You know, her sister, she has a brother and a sister who are both actors. Oh, no. so uh, uh, Verminia, I think her name, I can't remember her last name. Yeah. So both her brother and her sister are pretty well-known uh, actresses. I just was like, like I mentioned in my video, I thought she was like sickly. I was like, what is wrong with her? Uh, I don't know what is, but the actress just looked like, I, I didn't think she looked that great. Um, and then in those clothes, I thought she looked like she was, they dressed her it, like it, a she, China doll. 
Yeah, she definitely played young. I would say yeah, she 16, did. 17, the oldest, I would give her. It, it I think she's in that. her 20s, though. Yeah, I, but I think she played like 16, 17. Mm -hmm. You know, Gladys' son, I, I would say he's got to be in his 30s. All right. I think he had to be in his 30s talking oh, to a Oh, easily. Yes. Yeah, you know, talking to a 16 year old girl. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, and I thought that that was a plot that they didn't go with, with, with his boyfriend, you know, saying, you know, hmm, I'm a good looking guy too. Let me show you what I could do. I'll bag this girl from you. You want her. And, and then they dropped that storyline too and just had him go right back with him. I thought that was a good thing to go with. They, mm -hmm. they should have played the more on that and had them try to battle it out and stuff, you know? So I, yeah. I, I thought they, that's a storyline they dropped too, maybe because of the, they shortened the season. Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So, and we were, okay. So we were going to talk about, uh, uh, oh, sorry, Miranda, or sorry, no, I thought Miranda, we were just talking about her. Uh, Gladys is, uh, sorry. No, I'm totally lost. I, I'm not good at Agnes is sorry, Agnes's niece, Marion. 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 All right. Okay. Meryl so, Streep. Meryl Streep's daughter. Meryl Streep's, yes, Meryl Streep's daughter. Her other daughter. Her she has this other her other daughter is also an actress. She's in um Mr. Robot. Oh, all right. Now, one of the things, okay, one of the things I saw was a lot of people didn't like her acting. Like, mm -hmm. what did you think of her? It's her first role, though. I would say, you know, listen. It's got to be rough being Meryl Streep's daughter because obviously, you know, she's one of the greatest actor, actors of all time, man or woman, Meryl Streep. And so it's got to be hard uh, coming in that shadow. So are you always going to be really judged critical? I thought the role didn't call for a lot. Uh, you know, she didn't really have to show too much emotion and the way that they talk and everything else. So I thought she did a decent job with it. I think she'll grow into it. I should get more comfortable into it, you know. But I, I didn't think she did. It stood out that she was terrible. You know, I, I think that, the you know, the Black actress, our actor, but I think that she had more yeah. on the bone role for her to do it. I, well, I totally agree with that. I felt that's probably what happened for me is that the actress who played Peggy mm -hmm. just was so much, so much better of an actor against her. So it just, yeah, it showed her sort of um, lack of experience, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. No, Peggy blew it down. I mean, mm -hmm. when, you, when they got into the fight. You know, when she filed the home and she pulled out them shoes, you could just that it. that whole scene was really confusing for me. That whole thing was just didn't where did work she get me those at all. Shoes from now? Did they say where she got these shoes from? Well, I, I mean, she followed her and then she showed up with a used pair of shoes. Yeah, with a used pair of shoes. I mean, what? Why? Why did you think? You know, if you filed them, you showed up with a brand new set of shoes, but these were some busted ass shoes. Like these were shoes that have been worn for like ten years ago. Like these were, the, and she said. This is as good as you're gonna get. Are these ten year old shoes? I, you know, yeah. I, I, I'm glad they did show that. You know that. You know, not all black people were extremely poor, and I know that's the the image that they want to show, that they want to tell. But that's not the way it was. There were black people who did not, or many of them, but there were had money and they had their own black society and stuff. You know, so there was mm -hmm. that same thing going on. You know, it wasn't to that to the level of the white people at the time, but they did have their own society and their own, you know, upper, it's like they do today, you know, there's no difference. Yeah. Apparently um, uh, Peggy's father is, was based on a real life character who was like, he was a pharmacist, a, a, a quite, you know, well-to-do pharmacist. Well, back then, you know, obviously there was segregation and everything else and all the other things. So when you were black, you had to have, you had to have black doctors, you had to have black pharmacists, you had to have black store owners, you had to have black uh, people running carriages back then, because there was only, that's the only way you're going to have access to these things. And yeah, it was it. interesting that uh, Peggy, uh, she said some some uh, carriage drivers would stop for her and others wouldn't, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I, I don't know if it was some people just didn't, if in the show it's incorrect that they have it, that you have to be a, a black carriage driver to pick up a black woman. Uh, you can't be a white carriage driver and pick up a black woman. I'm not sure what the, the rules were. Yeah, they played it very loose. I mean, with the, with the racism. Like they had a couple of people being racist, but... Listen, I, that a lot of that I do believe is false. I don't think that, you know, Peggy would have been able to hang out with this girl and 
people with a ladder in the house and inside the office and just like in there and you know the, and, and, the, the, and the lawyer was like oh come in my office i'll help you out. i don't think it would have been like that at all i don't think you know if it was really the way it went down yeah, Mary Jane said a lot of the uh, cast came from Broadway only because Broadway was shut down due to COVID. Actually, that's really nice, actually, that I didn't realize that story. They hired a lot of Broadway actors in it. I actually did a movie years ago that both Audra McDonald, who plays Peggy's mother, and um, <clears throat> Donna Murphy, who mm -hmm. plays the upper, I can't forget her name. She's the upper society lady. Uh, they were both in that as well together. So it's sort of funny that they're in another movie together. It was a terrible yeah. movie, though. And I have to say, Donna Murphy, she's a piece of work. She was not a nice lady. So uh, just throwing that. I didn't say that in my video, but I'm just going to say this for all you here in the live stream. She So she, it's funny because I was like, when I was watching her playing, uh, someone tell me who um, Donna Murphy played. I can't remember her name. But when she was in the, mo in the show, I was like, she's kind of like that in real life. It was like perfect casting. She's kind of snooty and uh, uppity like that. So I thought that was actually pretty good. Yeah, I like the Peggy storyline with the, you know, with the, with the child mm -hmm. and the father, you know, getting rid of the child and, and really the child being alive and everything else. And him saying, that, you know, being adopted and all that, because I'm sure that really did happen. You know what I mean? It's, and, you know, it did ring true. Like, and I know Julian oh, Fellows, uh, as much as like, I'm like always borrowing from this, he's borrowing from that. He did apparently do, oh yeah, sorry, Mrs. Astor. Thank you. It's Donna Murphy. Mm -hmm. Uh, she, yeah, he apparently did a lot of research on this. So, uh, I thought that was, you know, that was actually a pretty interesting storyline and we will have it carry over, you know, I guess into season two, cause yeah, they've just, like, to they've just left ghost, ghost to go find a child. Me. Yeah. Go searching for the child and, and writing for the paper and, you know, and they, and then, oh, we like your story, but they didn't realize she was a black woman writing the story and they didn't want to put it in there because they were afraid to lose subscribers if they knew it was a black woman that wrote the story. But then the black paper guy just says, just put it in my paper and just, you know, just work here with me and don't worry about it. And then obviously we see a little love connection going on there with them too. And yeah, he apparently is. I, I watched, uh, there's, I don't know if you watch, watch Mojo. Uh, there, they did a video and apparently he is also a real life character. Oh, all right. Uh, so uh, it's, that's, that part is true. So he has borrowed a lot. I mean, I mentioned just a few people in my video, but a lot of the characters, a lot of the are, are based on real life characters or are actual, you know, kind of like someone was saying earlier, mm -hmm. uh, Molly Brown, who is in Titanic. She was like a real life character. They probably have him back like Tesla I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because they showed the Edison thing. So they probably have Bertha's husband, you know, go out, go go with Tesla and, and, and different, you know, th that'll probably be a story. Like, I don't think that they just showed that. Just yeah, a one off, you know, you'll have. Some... Are, you, are you talking about um, when they did the the light, like the, the Thomas light. Edison yeah, scene? Thomas yeah, which scene. apparently, again, was true. They did that. Yeah. It was slightly different. They didn't do exactly that way. But uh, so that's kind of fun because I enjoyed that because I didn't know that. And I don't know. It was funny. Actually, I was just thinking because we were talking about Sex in the City, which is takes place in New York. And then, you know, and then she, Cynthia Nixon's in this, which also takes place in New York. So but at a different time period. And she ran for governor in New York. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> well, well, Tatiana, I don't know. Maybe she's fine now, but she uh, just on the movie I worked on with her, she was she was a pill. She drove the costume designer bonkers, apparently. Um. So, all right. So we talked about Peggy. We talked about Mar Marion. Um. What? Who else? Oh, do you want to talk about the children? Like, um, do you want to talk about? We talked a bit a bit about Gladys. Uh, did you want to talk about Larry who wants to be an architect and all you that? Know, yeah, that story kind of was flat to me too. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it's a kid who wanted to live out his dreams and, and the dad shutting it down. I mean, it was, you know, basically shutting it down, but I think he gave the okay in the end, he was coming around mm -hmm. to it and everything else, you know, but th th those storylines really didn't go anywhere. I mean, they didn't really flesh them out. He was just a side note. He was just the go between the houses it seemed like you know and even when it was the note that didn't even get blown up like she 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 was got there before the note went got agnes got her hands on the note you know she got 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 there before that i was aunt agnes should have got her hands on that note 
and she should have, you know, had to apologize. Like I had to act as soon as she had told you. And I was just, yeah. scared, you know, but they just, yeah. I didn't uh, do you, that. Uh, do you feel like it's being set up that Larry and Marianne, Marion are going to end up together? That's what they want. You know, that, that, that would be the, Although there's no chemistry. <laughs> no, but that would be the joining of the new and the old, right? Yeah, that would be, exactly. So that's where I think it's, they in the end, that's what they're going to go with. You know, the join the houses, like yeah, it's a game of thrones, we'll join our houses. And that'll be the yes. house joining and that will be how, but I, that'll be the, how they really get into side. The next generation, they'll really do it together and stuff. Because she's got the pedigree and the name. And he's got the, the money and that's all mm -hmm. it's going to take. So I do believe that's what's going to happen when it's all said and done. Uh, what did you think of George, the dad, George Russell? I th I liked I liked the way he played it. I, li I liked his character. I liked the way he played it and everything. I thought he was he was very believable in the role. And, you know, I just I, I think he was a little subservient for the times to his wife. I think at that time, the men called the shots much more than they put out there. And I understand that they wanted to make it seem like she was, you know, Bertha and everyone bows down to Bertha. But I, I just don't think it would have played out like that. It just didn't ring true. Yeah, it's kind of like in my house, um, you know, like I'll kind of go on about stuff and then eventually Jack will be like, Heidi, stop it. And I'll be like, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was waiting for that moment. I mean, he did kind of lash out at her a few times. Like, you know, five people died. Mm -hmm. And and then she didn't she didn't sort of back down, though. She didn't kind of go, oh, you know, you're right. I should, you know, that's terrible or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't know what the future holds for their relationship. Um, it's it's certainly kind of an odd relationship, I especially given the time period. I'm not saying that there weren't ever relationships like that, but I do agree with you that it does seem very contemporary. It doesn't seem like what what would have probably would have happened back then. Um, but yeah, Tatiana says she thought. I think Tatiana, you said you thought he was kind of sexy. As I mentioned earlier in the in the live stream, I had someone who asked me where all the hot men are, and I have to agree. <laughs> I don't like maybe except for Mr. Rakes, which by the way, did you find the fact that his name was Rake uh, a giveaway? Like of the kind of character he would be. Like, I don't know if you watch Bridgerton, but in Bridgerton, a rake is a man who is, you know, uh, a womanizer. Or lazy oh, man. no, I, I don't. I had no idea that that's what that meant <laughs> at all. Yeah, she said, yeah, she thinks that George Russell is sexy to me, especially when protecting his family. But I don't know, maybe it's his beard. It's just like it was too thick and thick, thickly. Mm -hmm. His beard was too thickly. <laughs> like, I think if it was like more like your beard, like it kind of was, I mean, beards were really hot then, I guess they were really, they were the rigor kind of thing at the time. So I can understand that. But I saw a picture of, with him without his beard. And I think he looks much more handsome without his beard. Yeah, I think they did it purposely just for the time period that they had him wearing the beard. And yeah. it seemed like a lot of the people he went up against didn't have beards, you know. So, you know, I guess it made, makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it's true. It yeah, kind of gave him a bit of a stronger. Yeah, like you make him look stronger, make him look more manly than the, the people he was going up against. I think that's why they pulled it off like that. Well, I'm saying that, O-Town Girl, but then I did look it up again, and there was a, uh, I can't remember Mr. Rake's first name, but there was a Rake's, like, again, they, it, it didn't look anything like him, but it, they borrowed that name. He was a lawyer. Uh, so, yeah, Julian Fellows kind of went through Wikipedia and found a bunch of names that were people who lived during the time, I guess. He played Capone's brother in Boardwalk Empire. Oh, very cool. And is the lead in The Plot Against America. He is a solid actor. He did play Capone's brother in Boardwalk Empire. Yes, he did. Now, now that you said it, I do remember it now. I, I, I could see him. He did play his brother in Boardwalk Empire, which is a great, that's a great show, Boardwalk Empire. It should have never got. Yeah. I think if I were going to, I think in terms of hotness, I would go for, I would go for Agnes. <laughs> Agnes, well, the actress she's kind of hot. She's you know, she looks like my stepmother. She's my, a like Jack, of New York, uh, you know. Yeah, you know, my yeah. husband and I are watching it, and we're like, she looks just like like Carolyn, my stepmother. She does. It was really crazy. It's just so weird. Like to me, again, when I when I look at the show, the just the wealth and the opulence that these people lived on is just like they didn't even 
they had people there to pull the chair from under your ass when you yeah. sat up from the yeah. dinner table that just stood there in these these British looking costumes that look like soldier costumes. You know they do, they look kinda like toy soldiers. I didn't touch on that, but you're right. They do. They look kind of like well, they're like livery. Mm -hmm. Like they are an 18th century sort of throwback, but I know it's, it's like, it was funny. There was one scene where the British Butler is inspecting all of the staff mm -hmm. at the Russell house before the dinner. And he, and you know, there's like, how many were there of them, right? They were standing in a row, like you say, like toy soldiers. It yeah. was crazy. It, it, it's just, you know, it, it was just so much. It's just, I, I don't understand. That's the way it was back then. I had, people had so much money back then you know the upper peer you know had like one third the country's wealth back then and stuff so it just it's just too, it was just too much like i just couldn't believe that people actually lived like this i mean literally she literally lived in a in a hotel by herself it's just it's just that's just yeah. amazing that you could live in a hotel by yourself and and everyone just wants to see what the, what it looks like inside it's just you know because when you look at aunt agnes's place and aunt agnes's you know, she has a brownstone. It's a nice brownstone, but it nevertheless is a brownstone. My aunt had a brownstone that looked just like that, you know, and, and my, my cousin lived downstairs and she lived upstairs in it and stuff, but they got the staff live. And then you go across the street, this this place takes up the whole block. It's the whole block, this house, the whole block. It's not mm -hmm. half the block. The whole block is just the house. Is this this one house and is this it's just amazing that, that she, they actually live like that, you know? And, and then one thing that they didn't show that I think they should have shown is that there had to be a lot more horse shit in the street because, you know, yes. there had to be, right? <clears throat> it's just, well, all these horses around, I don't know why they didn't have that horse shit in the street like that. Yeah, um, I think that they did really, because uh, my understanding is they put stuff in the middle of the road, like they they filled in the road to make it look like it was you know, um, earth or whatever. So they took a real road and then they filled it in kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, no, they made it look much more pristine, pristine than it actually would have been. I'm sure. Um, uh, even in the, in the wealthy areas. Yeah. You can't, when you have nothing but horses and carriages, these horses go whenever they want to go, you know, it's mm -hmm. not, there's no way that it's not full of horseshit out there, you know, and there's, there's no way it's not going to be like that. Up yeah. the area, not this is had that has to be this is well, the way around it. There was this one scene where Marion and Agnes and Ada are crossing the street to go to the ball. And I'm thinking, oh my God, they're walking across the street with their dresses dragging on the ground oh. like that. Mm -hmm. I was horrified. I was like, because even though it was like a set, I'm thinking there's no way they would have done that. Like it would have been like you like you say, it could have dragged through poop. You know, all the dirt, all the feces, like, you know, it would have been nasty. And then you go into a beautiful house like that. I mean, because normally you would step out of a carriage. I actually think that they probably would have gotten into a carriage, had it right around the block and then park outside of the house. And then they would have gotten out. Yeah, right, I think that's right, actually, onto the, right onto the carpet. Right on. Yeah. I think that that's actually what they would have done. I don't think they would have ever have just walked across the street like that. I'm not a historical historian, but... Um, uh, that's what I think, because it just seemed crazy that that they would just, you know, walk across the street like that. And then the next morning, Marion then again, but at least she's holding her skirts, though, then mm -hmm. she does hold her skirts as she goes back. And my husband was like, what? They were all up all night. And I'm like, yeah, no, they did do that. That one I do know is true. They would they would basically party all night um, mm -hmm. until the wee hours of the morning. I mean, although she would have had to have been chaperoned. That's the mm -hmm. only thing. So. I'm not sure what what was going on there, but now, the fanny bumps. Yes. That they had. Now, were they there to make it look like you had a big butt? Yes. That was it, like to make it look like you had a big butt. No, even yeah. if you didn't have one. Exactly, because uh, the idea was that you'd have that really nice, tiny little waist with the corset, and then it would kind of be rounded, and then the and then you'd have this. Yeah, you'd have like a rounded ass, and it's interesting because nowadays you see women either getting injections or they're getting like plastic mm -hmm. surgery to create that illusion. So it's sort of funny to have that tiny waist and then and a bubble butt, I guess they call it. Right. Yeah. So in the, in those days, that's what they were sort of going for. Um, and uh, uh, a, a, Alicia says never understood why dresses from that era were made to slide against the floor's sidewalk street. Um, 
Yeah, well, I don't know. It just seems weird that they would they they would have been filthy. They would have just. But normally, you would have a petticoat underneath it that would kind of like yeah, but filthy still. rotten. They would have been yeah, filthy rotten. There's no way around that. You know that they wouldn't have been filthy because I'm sure they had cobblestone streets back then, but that most of it was dirt. You know, just yeah, dirt. they made that choice for the show. Like I in um in the oh, was it uh, in the Alienist they have the same thing. So they have paved sidewalks, but then the street itself is like dirt. So I mean, and I the Alienist I think is also in New York. I think uh, Justin, I think you've seen the Alienist, but I'm not sure. Yes, it's called a bustle or like a bum roll or a bum pad. Like I actually there was this one I saw that was really cool. It was basically just kind of like wire, like a wire coil. Mm -hmm. So it would just give you a little bit of one. But if you wanted a really good one, it would be made of cane and uh, a whole frame, almost like whale, like a whale frame kind of thing. And that like one that. woman, I, I don't remember who it was, but. Her dress was terrible. It looked like looked like a curtain it had doilies all over it and stuff. Like doilies hanging. Like that was disgusting. Like I, who would actually wear? That? Wasn't that Marion? That's the one I hated. Was it Marion that picture? It had like doilies hanging on it. It was just it was just so bad. I just did not like that dress. I was like why would they? And it looked like a curtain. It truly looked. And this amount of fabric that these women had to wear back then. How hot had you have to been? every day of your life you know because they didn't wear pants back then right there was no pants at all for anyone it was always a dress no skirts no nothing right uh yeah they would wear um well they would wear drawers like underneath it um kind of like uh or like a sorry they would wear a chemise at that time they would wear a chemise so they'd have no underwear just like a chemise so it'd be kind of like you know they'd be flowing in the breeze and if it was uh silk silk were actually breezed really well silk and cotton like they show them in a lot of silks and stuff but they would have worn a lot of cotton day dresses they didn't really show a lot of those like when mm -hmm. i was doing my research on it a lot of them would have just been these simple cotton day dresses because marion had playing, some you know playing tennis you're playing tennis in these big ass dresses. Right? That dress, I question that dress that Gladys was wearing. I'm like, uh, because yeah, again, they would have been like cotton. Mm -hmm. And she was wearing like a bustle playing tennis. Like I was like, really? Like, I don't know. I wasn't I <laughs> well, it's the same with the swimsuits, right? Do you remember do you remember like yeah. the period swimsuits? Yeah. Like they'd be like <laughs> they yeah. would drown. I'm yeah. probably they must have drowned. I don't understand. I, I just don't understand how they got away with, with, with wearing that stuff. I could. They had to be sweating up a storm. They would have been. Yeah. And I don't. I don't know if you know. I don't know if antiperspirant deodorant was as prevalent as or good as it was today. So it it, it couldn't have been a, a, a good smelling situation going on there with all these dresses and stuff. I just didn't think it would be. You know, women. I don't think you, they shaved their armpits back then either, right? So no. I, no, they would have worn a chemise. Like I, one of the things I don't know, Tony, if you watched the video, but I mentioned they would have worn like a, a corset cover to keep uh, to keep their dresses clean. So if they were sweating, it would have at least covered their skin, and then that would absorb the sweat, and then they'd have their gown over top of it. But in film, they would wear what are called pit pads. Mm -hmm. So it's like a it's like a a piece that goes inside your costume, and then it just basically absorbs all the sweat. So. That way they don't have to clean your costume all the time. They can just mm -hmm. change out this pet pit pads. They put them in with snaps or whatever. But yeah. Um and and, and I'll, yeah, I'll, exactly, I'll, Tatiana. I gonna, yeah. I was gonna say something else too about the dresses and everything. I forgot. I'll, I'll remember it in a second. That's okay. It's funny, you're wearing a polo shirt, which is like a, a symbol of the elite. Oh well, that's what <laughs> I wear it because Ralph Lorenz from New York. So I just, my, Oh, is he? Yeah. Yeah, it's my design. It's from the Bronx, baby. From the Bronx. Yeah. I love Ralph Lauren, actually. Um, I used to call, actually, I used to call him Ralph Lauren. And then someone says, no, it's Lauren. And I'm like, really? I'm like, I've always said Lauren. It's Ralph <laughs> Lauren. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I've been saying Lauren, like, because there's a perfume called Lauren, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, Oak Town Girl says, fair warning, I'm really pissed off at what I perceive to be a total absence of male eye candy in House of the Dragon, and everyone oh, is going to hear from me about it. Where is um, from? Well, apparently, uh, isn't, um, isn't uh, what's his name, uh, Sir Cole, Sir Christian Cole, isn't he handsome? Uh -huh. 
I, I, I don't know if he is, but I, I think, think women may think he is. I think the character he's playing is an asshole. You know what I mean? But I mean, yeah. when you really, I mean, it's not about, the show is not about looks. It's not about looks. It's not about being, it's not about hotness? No. That's oh, not come about, on, Tony. Some of it is. Show is about, you know, that's not what it's about. I know everyone looks at Matt Smith and, oh, he's not the, the who I picked. That's the difference. See, that's that's the problem with with, uh, with doing books at adaptations because when you read a book, you have something in your head when you're reading it. You you have who this person looks like in your head, and when you see someone who's not that, then it's then it's then it's a problem for you. You know, listen, if you want to say he looks like Fabio, I can't believe it's not butter. You know, there are women who love Fabio. Right? He was like the the romance cover guy for like. 30 years or whatever he was there. He was on every romantic cover novel, but I never thought that, you know, I, I'm not going to look at guys or anything, but I always didn't think there was anything special about this guy, especially that he's, he's like five foot two, I think. He's a, he's a yeah. He's really there was really, smart. actually, there was really no one in Game of Thrones that I was like swooning over. I don't think there was, you know, I, I don't think that's what this show was about. No, about I don't that. think so either. Uh, but this show does feel like, I don't know, like maybe, I don't know. It's not really, it's not really a romance. It's more like a drama, right? It's a drama. Yeah. So I don't know that it's meant to have like handsome people in it, but um, yeah, House of the, the Dragon. It's handsome, you know, just because you have a status and this is, you know, oh, he's the prince, he's the king. Doesn't mean you're good looking, you know, there's a lot of not good looking people there, you know, in the world. So, you know, not everyone can be Brad Pitt. And I know that's what people want and everything else. And it's not like these women. I think the women are, are somewhat attractive, but it's not like they're supermodels that they put in these roles. So, you know. No, I, I mean, like, even, I mean, it's funny because, uh, you know, Sophie Turner, who has turned into quite a beauty. But mm -hmm. when they cast her, they had no idea what she was going to look no. like. She was no. just, she was really sweet and cute. <sighs> Same with Maisie Williams. I mean, Daenerys, okay, yeah. Uh, but you know, it, she's not, it, but still, she's not a supermodel. She's no. beautiful, but she's not like, you know, uh, she still sort of got that sort of a bit of a girl next door, like, a, an, a you know, a realistic sort of beauty. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I, I think that anyway, I, I'm kind of like, I feel bad because I was one of the ones who wasn't super crazy about Matt Damon, Matt Damon, <laughs> Matt Smith playing <laughs> Damon, uh -huh. Damon Smith, Matt Smith, Damon. I uh, but I'm coming. I'm coming around to it. I'm coming around to it. I'm like, you know, uh, speaking of House of the Dragon, I was thinking, would you want to do a House of the Dragon live stream with me at some point? Yeah, whenever you want, just let me know. I'm always okay. There. So uh, maybe we'll start wrapping things up here. Are Are you okay to talk a few more minutes? Yeah, of course. Uh, okay. So uh, I don't know if we if we touched on all the characters. We talked to him, Larry. We talked. We talked a bit about rakes. Uh, I think you sort of. I think you mm -hmm. summed that up pretty well. Uh, is there anybody we missed? Like, did you want to talk about any of the downstairs characters? Like, I, you know, I oh. mentioned I wasn't crazy about the maid. I mean, she's not supposed. I, I shouldn't hold it against the actress because I think the actress did a good job. I just didn't like the storyline. I thought it was. Well, she just got, She just jumped right in bed with him. You know, well, it was just, just really weird. Like, at least in Downton Abbey, there was a maid in Downton Abbey that was making the moves on the the. I guess the, who he had been formerly the the chauffeur, right? And mm -hmm. you know. And she sort of thought of him as being at the same station as her. So she's like, okay, you were a chauffeur. I'm a lady's maid. So it would make sense that we would get together. And also he seemed to like her. So it made sense to me that she made the moves on her. But here, like, George never even once, like, no. even looked at her. And she even touched him at one point. And he was like, what the fuck are you yeah, doing, it, it you know? Was just, it was just too abrupt that she yeah. would think that she could just go in there and take this woman's husband from her, like, Mm -hmm. They didn't show any chemistry in him. Didn't show that he was flirting with her in any way. It just happened too quick. She just, I'm going to jump in the sack with you. You know what I mean? And risk everything just for this moment. I think they should have played it out more. It should have been a longer role. You know, and then, you know, and then, you know, see some type of, of something jump off, you know, in between them and stuff. So, no, I, I didn't like the way that they handled it. And then she just became like a, uh, a spy kind of just giving information after that walking through the park and stuff no i, I didn't like that I thought they should they could have built that up better 
Now what are you going to do? See, that's a storyline done. Now you had a handmaid and try to hit You're going to have another one coming in and try to pull the same thing? Can't do that now. They did a little bit too much. You're going to have a, a one of the butlers try to talk to Miss Russell, and no one's talking to Miss Russell. Everyone's scared to death of her. You know, so what are you going to do there? You know, so I think they could have milk that one out for a little bit longer than what they did. Maybe it would have been more interesting if the ladies made made a move on um, on Mrs. Russell. That would have oh. been more. I did a, actually, I did a play years ago uh, called, um, oh, what was it called? It took place around the same period. And it was this woman who, she was a black dressmaker in New York, who would make uh, undergarments for society women in New York. And so she was making clothes for this very well-to-do woman. And then the well-to-do woman actually made a pass at the seamstress, which was really kind of interesting, right? So that maybe that would have been a bit more interesting than her, you know, than yeah. uh, her making a pass at the husband. That oh, That's what I was going to say that I forgot. Yeah, these dresses these women wore, it was like a suit of armor. It took like four people to get them out of the dress. You know, like every time yeah. they got undressed, you couldn't, you couldn't get undressed by yourself. You had to have yeah. like four people. It was like a... Like a like a knight, it was like a suit of armor to get out of that dress. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> uh, Tatiana, first thing she says she wants to join us when we do the uh, House of the Dragon. Sure, uh, for sure, Tatiana. And she said, "How about the valet pinning at, pining after the, his rich lady?" Oh, so we sort of talked about yeah, that. We, we just sort of uh, Tony. What his feeling about that was that it was probably a former love of his. Yeah. And then she went on to marry someone of money, and he's still kind of pining for her. But of course, she won't leave you know to go to him and that we felt i felt that it was kind of unresolved at by the end of the season which made me th this is why i thought that maybe there should have been a 10th episode because there's a couple of unresolved issues that felt like maybe production just said guys we can't we can't do 10 we're gonna have to cut it at nine so that's what uh, that's what i thought uh the birth is made thing didn't go anywhere it was very disappointing i never felt that russell's marriage was in danger no no of course not no, like we were saying earlier he's like he's madly in love with his wife he puts up with her you know bullshit yeah and sleeps in a separate room with her you know what i mean yeah not even on the same floor it seems like they're they're, they're different wings of the house they have their own wing yeah because they have so much money and, and they live in a palace they live yeah. in a palace so they have all this space uh oh jacon okay jacon is uh oh town girls uh guy he's he is very handsome from uh game of thrones she's talking about tony uh, i i can't tell you either way <laughs> you can, seriously you can't tell if a man is handsome or not i could i could tell who are we talking about who jack and hagar jack and hagar yeah i, mean, I I'd see nick like coastal wall the women liked him yeah and women like that like tim i i think women did like jack and i think women liked the uh, pedro pascal's over in martel yeah like them, you know? yeah so. i didn't but you know what i didn't find him, i it wasn't until later that i thought he was attractive i in that role i didn't i wasn't i wasn't like oh wow i was well, i loved the woman who played his 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 uh oh god movie. yeah absolutely like, she's I've stunning loved i loved her since like seeing her in rome like she was my chick in rome like i loved her you rome. have to watch kama sutra Oh, she amazing. stars in that. She's oh, amazing in I Kama Sutra. Her. It's I've very sexy. I've never seen a woman that looked like her in my life still to this day. Like she's the only one I've ever seen that even has that look. Like her look. Yeah, is she. So it's unique. it's beautiful. It's uh, with Naveen Andrew, who is funny. Speaking of Fabio, when we went to see. Um, what was the movie we went to see? It must have been um, The English Patient. My friend Naveen, is, he's washing his hair. He's got long black hair, and he's washing his hair in The English Patient, and then he flips it back, and my friend turns to me, and he goes, oh, my God, it's Black Fabio. Because <laughs> 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 he's, like, got this beautiful black long hair. Anyways, he's he's in it as well. So he plays the king, and she plays, like, a courtesan or, a like, a... Um, uh, I know. I think it's a courtesan. Yeah, she dances and everything, and she's supposed to be like, you know, know how to seduce a man and all that. So you, you probably would really like it. I love her. Oh, Alicia said, "You, Heidi, with the deep cut of Kama Sutra." Oh yeah, Tatiana says, "I, I found Peter Dinklage pretty cute. Actually, he is kind of cute. I've always loved Peter Dinklage, though." No, they say he's the the Brad Pitt of little people. He is. He's pretty. He's pretty sexy. Um. All right. So, any final thoughts, Tony, on? The Gilded Age. I would say that you know it's it wasn't the greatest season, but I think you know if I had scale of one to ten, 
I'd probably give it a seven and a half. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't the greatest. You know, did it deserve a second season? Yes. I'd like to see where they go with it. So I, I'm definitely interested in watching season two and hope that they work out some of the kinks. I don't know where they're going to go with it, but maybe that's a good thing, you know. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's funny because when I, I was looking up some of the reviews online and, and that's sort of where it sits with most people. But uh, I was saying to, to Tony before he came on, like before we went live, that about a, it was a while ago we did a review of Cursed, which never got reviewed. Uh, and too bad because I thought it was a decent little show. Mm -hmm. But Tony said, you know, I always give a season to a show, it, even Game of Thrones, you know, the yep. first season, it always takes a little while for the show to sort of find its legs. Mm -hmm. and I mean, oftentimes this is the second season that I usually really get into and I'm like, oh my God, like even Downton Abbey, like, I mean, I kind of thought first season was pretty good, but then like when I started getting into deeper seasons, I'm like, oh my God, this is so good. So I'm really hoping for that. And I, I love some of the quirky um, storylines. That's actually, some of the humor is pretty good. Some of the twists mm -hmm. were pretty good. And um yeah, so I, I definitely will be all in for a second season of it. And yeah, I'll, watch, I'll be there. I'll be watching the second season. And we'll judge it. I'll really judge it after the second season. That That's because we'll, we'll see where it goes then. But I like the costumes. I like, you know, I like that era. So I like to see, I like history. So I like to see anything of that era. So I can't wait to see them put more famous people in there too, you know, and have them interact with these famous people. I'm going to my prediction is now is that he's going to back Tesla and that that's going to be what goes on. He, he's going to, you know, obviously it didn't happen in real life, but he's going to be, he's going to always back the winner. I think George. So I think they're going to have him back Tesla and that'll be, That'd be very that, cool. That, that's the one. It'll be the battle of Edison versus Tesla and he'll be yeah. involved in it that way. I think that's my husband cool. loves telling me that uh, Edison was a total dick. That's Apparently, what I keep like, hearing from everyone. Yeah, asked he was stole a total everybody's asshole. Ideas. He stole a lot of ideas from people, Edison. Mm -hmm. I mean, never give the black man credit for coming up with the filament. You know, he never tried, yep. you know. So it, this is who he was and stuff like that. So Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and uh, Alicia says she wants us to discuss C with Jason Momoa. It actually came up, actually, uh, Alicia, I was saying to Jack the other day, I'm like, oh, C is two seasons. Like, Alicia's been saying we should check it out. So yeah, I, I, watched, it I watched both seasons. I watched the last one. Oh, yeah? Did you? Yeah, Batista was in the last one and stuff. So it's it's hard, you know. It's good. It's the first season is crazy. It's like like the, the the queen in there, who's like the queen lady in there, and now she she's having orgasms, and it's it's a, it's just a nutty situation there. Second season is better than the first season. What 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 I would have a shot of a doubt. Uh, it, it's better, but you know, it's still hard to know these people can't see, and that the way they maneuver, like some things, is just nowhere. How they build a bridge all the way across this thing and they can't see how are they building these rafts and they can't see how is the um they, they how are all their clothes color coordinated and they can't see you know if you're gonna really do it you need to have them have some mismatch shit on some green and some purple because there's no way everyone's is in the same color and it's matching perfectly people can't see so some things about it's a little quirky but the battles that the, the actual battles and the fights are amazing mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah, oh, it was interesting because, uh, you know, the actress who, or Maisie Williams, who played Arya, she actually like when she was doing those, you know, blind scene moments, she those contacts actually made her blind. So in a way, even though they were super uncomfortable, it kind of was good because it was like, I can't. I can't, I have to do this stuff real. Like, so, but I guess they didn't, they just went with acting and decided that they would just be blind. That was another plot hole that they didn't follow through with Arya. They should have had her, you know, at one point in one scene, they should have had her at least close her eyes and just start taking people out like she's more comfortable. Like she's like Batman. She's like the daredevil. Like she's more comfortable in the dark, you know. So she yeah. had her close her eyes and start taking things out. We never got to see her. She learned that skill and never came to fruition. She learned the skill of lying and catching people in lies. And she wasn't able to catch Littlefinger in his lies and almost got executed by her own sister because of it. There's a lot of things in that. I don't want to go into Game of Thrones right now. That, that, that I didn't uh, agree with and stuff. Yeah. Um, I agree with um, what uh, 
Oaktown girl. She's saying um, that they could have made Agnes clown a clownish villain, but they did a good job with her. See, I don't see her as a villain. She's not the villain. Bertha yeah. is the villain. I think Bertha is the villain too. She is. I don't know how it could go any other way. Bertha is the villain. She's the one who's trying to intrude on society and, and just jump in there because she has money. She has nothing but money. And she thinks because she has money, she could just get what she, her way. And that's it. She oh, doesn't have to be friends with these chicks. She doesn't have to do anything. I got money. I'll throw my money at this. I'll throw money at charity. I'll throw money at this and I'm in because I have money. It's got nothing to do with anything she's trying to do, or any morals she has. She's just like, I got money, so you let me in no matter what, because I got the money to get in, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, Marge just says, I heard it on the Gilded Age Companion podcast, really great, that Christine Baranski is an actually is actually a descendant from one of the Gilded Age's Gilded Age families, so perfect casting. That's very cool. Yeah, it is. Um, hopefully they uh, – well, I yeah, is, is it um, – one of the old money families though, or one of the new fa money families. She does have a bit of a, an accent. Like she has a bit of a, you know, but she's always spoken that way. She's a very, you know, sophisticated sort of accent. Um, so anyway, Tony, well, thank you so much for doing this. Like it was really, really fun talking thank to you about, you. it's funny. These are always like these types of shows always seemed like the type of thing that only ladies would like, but uh, I was, I actually was, um, bridge messaged me about the show that i should watch it and i'm like oh no way and then uh and then i was pleasantly surprised to see that you were watching it as well so yeah i watched the whole Sorry, thing i, mean, I just made a terrible generalization there uh that this is a girl flick uh, well i will say it's also i like those shows but i also say you know i am a youtuber even though i did not cover it on my channel i did think about it you know, I did think about covering it, but I, I just I, I just couldn't do it. I just didn't want to do it. So I was busy mm -hmm. doing things. Now, before you go, I really highly, uh, I was telling this to Justin, I highly recommend that you watch Severance. Uh, it's I have watched Severance. Oh, oh, yeah. and what do you I think? Supposed, I was supposed to be in, doing it with Phil. We, we were supposed to do a review on it. But I just, I just, I'm just so caught up with this show. I just don't have yeah. time to do it. Do, the, do Severance. But no, I've watched Apple TV is... They put out such great quality content. And I don't that never no one ever sees. But if you look at show for show for show, every one of them is just so well acted. They have the best actors uh, out of all of them. You know everything about all their shows are great. I love all the Apple TV shows. Everything. Yeah, we watched. Um, it wasn't super great, but we watched Lisey's Lisey's story, which is like a Stephen King. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, like it was like. Uh, Julianne Moore and uh, oh, the they get all the quality. Yeah, out. you know, really, really. Uh, and then you what? Was it Mayor of East Town? Is that Apple TV? No, that was that was HBO. But they okay. have, they have that uh, the Tales of Polymy Gray's the Last Day of Polymy with Samuel Jackson. That's out right now. That's a really good show. I mean, so many good shows. You know, it's really interesting. One of the things, uh, like I was doing, I was telling you earlier, I was doing this interview with a costume designer and she works in TV. And we were talking about how, like, you know, a lot of these actors, you know, who would normally be traditionally in film are now coming over to these streaming services and they're getting like super, you know, like Don't Look Up, for instance, was mm -hmm. a Netflix movie and, you know, had a really top cast. And I was just yeah. saying Severance, which is Ben Stiller, yeah, is one of the producers and a top notch cast in that. Oh. And, you know, just like such great. It's great because, you know, we can I'm actually going to see a movie on the weekend that you know what I'm going to see. What's that? <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog the sequel. <laughs> With my, I, my son's been talking about it for months. Mom, we have to go see Jim Carrey's last movie. Jim Carrey's <laughs> last movie. Yeah. So we're going to go see that on Saturday. So, yeah, no, it's rare for me to get up to a movie now. You should just watch. Um, even like I watched uh, like a couple of the Oscar movies were right on Netflix. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, well, oh, I guess I'll watch this here. What was did the one the, the one that won Best Picture? What was that on Apple? Uh, that movie? The movie was, that won oh, oh, yes, it is. It is. On Apple, right? It was an Apple movie that won Best yeah. Picture. Yeah. Children what? of uh, Coda. Yeah. Children right. of Deaf at Adults. Yeah. Man, yeah. So and and uh, no Tick, Tick, Boom, it. which Tatiana, if you haven't seen Tick, Tick, Boom, you have to watch it. It's amazing and i don't know so why good. people don't subscribe to apple tv it's like four bucks a month it's the cheapest service of them all it's the cheapest one of them all it's yeah. not even close you know what i mean so it's just because apple you know when you deal with net i mean like amazon and apple 
they don't they're not trying to make money off this stuff they they, they have money off their products you know, so they don't have to charge you with Netflix. Netflix, that's all they got. It's their income is what they're subscribing. This well, yeah, because I have Amazon because I get, like, you know, you get the, the bundle or whatever. Yeah, you get, Prime. like, you know, you get free delivery and you get Prime mm -hmm. and you get, like, so it's all kind of together. Uh, we Crashed is on right now and it's great. We Crashed? I don't oh. know that show. Okay, Justin, you have to message me with that. Or is it We? Or is it We Crashed? Um, anyway, so Tony, before we head out, uh, mm -hmm. firstly, I want to have you on for a, uh, house of the dragon live stream. Cause you know, they just made the announcement of the show, yeah. by the way, before I head out though, as I am working on a video of that, about it, what do you think about the fact that house of the dragon is going to be right on top of uh, Lord of the Rings? I think it's, it's I, I, I think I, uh, I don't know if it's that doing it the same day. Yeah, it's like a be, it's like a week and a half apart. I mean, like what day is that Lord Lord of the Rings? Oh, dropping? Lord Lord of the Rings is going to be on a Friday, and House of the Dragons on Sundays. So I say that's great for that's great for us. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I know. I was thinking. I'm kind of like because I'm I'm going. Are they going to release? Uh, I'm assuming both of them will be done weekly. Like they'll yeah, both be, be done weekly. weekly. Yeah. yeah. So we'll have a Friday show. We'll have a Sunday show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. But it'll be staggered because they'll have House of the Dragon will come out in August, and then I think, and then it's not for another week and a half, and then we'll have Lord of the Rings. My money's so. on House of the Dragon. The people that people. Oh, really? Know. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like you know it's funny because I was looking at the marketing the other day, and I'm like, it feels like the person doing the marketing is the same person. <laughs> so I don't know if it's the same person or they're just kind of copying each other, but it kind of reminded me that. Uh, oh, yes. I have to watch The Tragedy of Macbeth. That looks amazing with Denzel Washington. Uh, yeah, I'm going to definitely watch that for sure. I've been I've been looking at that for a long time. So uh, and apparently I read that uh, this one reviewer was saying, if you don't like Shakespeare, this is the one time that you will find Shakespeare actually kind of makes sense for you. Like it's. Mm -hmm. You know, but I, I mean, I studied Macbeth in high school and I should knock on wood because I'm not, well, I'm not in a theater. So Tony in theater, you're not supposed to say Macbeth backstage because it's bad oh. luck. So you're supposed to call it the Scottish play. All right. Uh, okay. Our flag means death on HBO max. Okay. I will watch it. Gosh, so many recommendations. Okay. So Tony, tell everyone where they can find you. You can find me on Teflon TV. You know, that's where you can find me. I'll be at live stream, you know, every week, like three days a week on this show. And I'll have a video up. Uh, Sunday will be in the next video I drop on this show, the season finale of From. If you haven't watched From, I suggest that you do it. It's on Epix. Uh, we we'll definitely watch it. It's definitely worth the watch and everything. And again, thank you for having me. I always have a great time rocking with you. So it's great to be here and talk about this show. And I noticed it got kind of quiet over there. Like what happened? Like there was a bit of, you know, there was some, like you had, a, oh, you, we were yeah. chatting earlier that there was, you know, you had a friend over who was hanging out there, but no, um, suddenly it's, it's, it's still there. <laughs> it got quiet though. It's well, quiet it, now. It, it, it depends what scenes on in the movie. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Suddenly it's like, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm drinking wine. It just seemed to get really quiet. Uh, and I want to thank Jack for bringing me a glass of wine. I'm wearing, I'm drinking out of Jack my, I drink and I know dark. things glass. And I want to thank Justin, who's been behind the scenes kind of doing, um, you know, he's been uh, helping out. So I really appreciate that. And I have a The Gilded Age costumes video. If you haven't checked it out, it's on my channel right now. And I'm working on a House of the Dragon video about the pictures, the new pictures that came out, mm -hmm. Tony. So I'm going to do that. So that'll be really fun. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk to Tony. We're going to plan a live stream about yep. uh, House of the Dragon. And we will be back with you guys soon. So thanks a lot, everyone. And have an awesome evening. Peace. Stay sexy. <laughs> Bye, everyone.